Hey everyone, welcome to our N-GON special. For those who don't know what an N-GON is, an N-GON is simply a face with more than four edges and it's purely a modeling feature. As we work in Max, Maya, Blender or any other modeling software out there, it's important to know that at the end of the day, if you put that 3D model here into a game engine, it's going to be triangulated anyway. So that is something that a lot of people seem to sometimes forget. If you turn on edit triangulation, then you can see that everything here is already pre-triangulated. So that gives you an idea how it actually would appear in the game. And a lot of people think that it's absolutely crucial to have everything in quads, but in reality, it's not. Like this here is the low poly model. And as you can see, we don't have any shading issues here going on at all. Even though we have like some serious N-GON going on here, like this one here, for example. And it's just easier, you know, to work with N-GONs in some cases, instead of having to connect every single edge so that it would form a quad. That would make your poly count likely to be, um, you know, out of proportion when it comes to saving also polys. And you always want to make sure that you really only use the polys where you actually need them. And in some cases, it's also just a matter of, you know, like being lazy about like connecting all these edges. Like for example, here, technically I could have just connected all these verts here. Let me just show you. Like I could have done something like that here for everything. But in the end, it's, it's not necessary. It doesn't matter as long as your normal map, which you see on here, bakes fine. So to sum it up, when it comes to our low poly, especially on hard surface objects, such as this here, like a weapon or a car or whatever else you might be working on, it doesn't matter if we have things in angons, especially when you look at it from an animation perspective. Like this piece here, for example, is perfectly static. It will never deform. And that is something that people sometimes might uh, talk about when they say we should keep things quads. It's all about looking at what kind of model it is that you're working with. And on a hard surface object such as this here, you have like a few static elements that are actually like rotating or making like a certain animation, like our trigger here. Um, all that is, is perfectly fine as long as we don't have to deform it, you know, like all that here is static. So let's just have a quick look at this here, for instance. So that would open up like that. It looks like I have my geometry in there flipped. Here we go. So something like that here does this. And once again, like I have a huge N-GON here, but it doesn't matter because we don't have to make some crazy, you know, deformation on it. It's never going to animate like that here, which then obviously would pose a problem. So that is something that people often think when they talk about N-GONs is like, oh, it, it might be an issue later for when we animate it. But we're talking about hard surface stuff where all we have are static elements that are never going to deform. So please keep that in mind. If you work on a character, for instance, and you want to hand that over to the rigging department and then later on it's passed over to the animators. In that case, you want to make sure that you have things quads, especially because it has to deform and they have to set the weighting to all the words. So in that case, it would be a nightmare for them to have like a ton of N-GONs all over the place. But here for hard surface stuff, such as weapons and vehicles, you really don't have to pay too much attention to keeping everything quad. And that is not supposed to be like an excuse for sloppy modeling. 
like you still need to know how to apply your your edges and vertexes to not get any overlapping or like issues that you will see anyway when you work on it. So just please keep that in mind that ngons doesn't equal sloppy modeling, you know? So as long as this is clear from a low poly side of things, then we can now have a look at our actual high poly. And that reveals something completely new that might be worth mentioning which is that the turbo smooth modifier that we have on top of our geometry here, it makes quads out of everything. Like the moment you put on turbo smooth, all these angons that we had here are now actual quads. So that guarantees a perfectly smooth high poly model after we applied our chamfer modifier and we work in combination with the smoothing groups, if you followed my tutorials. And that guarantees that we have like perfect quad high poly and it just bakes on perfectly fine then on our low poly model. So these are important things to just consider. And I think that that would hopefully clear things up when it comes to why you see n-gons in some of my low poly details or elements. And just at the end of the video, I want to show like another example here. For example, this here could be some sort of like an arch uh, above a door that you would find in a, you know, like any game. Obviously, I just made it uh, quick and dirty here, not a ton of details in it. But just to give the idea that this here would be perfect quads, right? And this here is pretty much the same geometry, but with all these edges that you see here forming up quads connected here into that corner and that corner. So that's the way that you would approach that here if you were to model something for an environment scene. And there is absolutely no difference whatsoever when it comes to our shading. But there is a huge difference when you look at our poly count. So just to demonstrate that, this one here has 120 polys and that one here has 180. So it's just a matter of saving polys. That's something that you always want to do when you work for games. Like you want to make sure that your poly count is as low as it can be because otherwise you know your game's gonna get uh, performance issues eventually so just to once again sum it up at the end it is important to keep in mind that low poly geometry can consist out of n-gons in areas especially where it's flat like here but it of course always makes sense to keep things as much in quads as it can be like I'm not going to make any advertisement here for having angons just for the sake of it. Like in the contrary, you want to still have your quad geometry wherever it makes sense to have it. Like for example, here on the magazine, as you can see, I kept it, I kept it pretty much quad everywhere because there is no sense in having angons. But very often you find yourself in a situation like this element here, which is like a big n-gon, where it just doesn't make sense once again to connect everything. Like you would never be able to make it all quads here. You you end up having like a, a model then that has like so many edges through it that it makes it also hard for you to then modify it while you still work on it. So the bottom line is that it comes all down to knowing what you're doing while you work on your models. And that is what I'm teaching you in my tutorials, which I hope that you enjoy watching. I get a lot of feedback from you guys and I appreciate it very much. And that is also exactly why I decided to make this video here, which is the first part of like a mini series of some of the things that I get asked a lot. I would also like to encourage you to have a look at forum.chamfrezone.com where, by the way, I already have a thread about the Engon topic. So if you want to read that up in text form, you can do so here on the forum, 
which by the way, we wouldn't even have if it wasn't for my fantastic wife, who happens to be an excellent web developer. She made the forum and the Champfazon website. I don't have the time to go through every single YouTube comment and Facebook message, unfortunately anymore. So this forum here really is also a good way for me to, you know, like dedicate time into one place if questions arise. And I know that 3D modeling and texturing, it is a complex issue, especially if you're new to it. And I would hope that um, you guys sign up for the forum and we can just continue the conversation. So yeah, that's it for the video. The next video will probably be about how to get the perfect baking result in Substance Painter. And also what else did I want to cover? Um, the Just the best way of creating high poly geometry, which kind of goes hand in hand which, with with what we were looking at here, but just to really explain the way that smoothing groups and gem for modifier and turbo smooth work hand in hand to ensure that we get the perfect normal map baking result. Anyways, I'll see you guys soon in the next videos. And uh, yeah, always pop me a message on the forum or of course also all the other channels. I'm still gonna be there. It just may take a bit more time to, for me to answer them. See you guys.